Come on. <laughs> All right. Yes, sister. Sister. Oh, sorry. Uh, Brother Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you very much. Um, with me, Chair, I have been listening, but I have not started the the session because I'm driving to our conference. I did oh, indicate okay. to Comrade Pigeon. Mm -hmm. um, yes, so I am in Johannes, but as we speak, I'm driving and I'm listening, which is not a good thing. So um, okay. the only thing that I really would like to comment and, and really appreciate is the matter in how you dissect what Kwame uh, stood for and meant. And I also like how you um, dissect the issue on, you know, on matter and how we should view matter. Um, but also on it, I think it's another form of control or, um, I cannot say manipulation, but it's like keeping Africans more down and not really empowering them to 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 fully. Um, how can I put it? It's like when you develop a child, you must holistically develop a child. So with 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 how you explain, for example, the issue on um, money, how you raised it, we will be too scared to really go for it fully because we will be told. Um, no, you are too materialistic. It's all about that. There's nothing wrong with it. But you've also just um, differentiated when you take leadership responsibility in terms of public representativity. What kind of leaders do you want? Do we really, do we really need? And I think there is a challenge that we are sitting with, where you take public office, but it's not to benefit. Uh, the people or the majority of the people whom have elected you or whom you are leading, but it will be more for yourself. For yourself. So um, I would also coin it with the previous discussions that we had on the type of politicians, for example, that we have, um, the, the three that we mentioned. And I think we said we are conforming with the one that is more radical and progressive, which means when you take public office and you Yours is to uh, change the lives of our people, to, to, to really uh, benefit and to be able to take care of themselves in all spheres, then um, we should give it to the people and not really keep it contained to ourselves. For me, I took that in terms of um, leadership and Kwame's view um, mm -hmm. yesterday, because I did not follow the whole uh, uh, session. I hope no, then that with my input, no, I have really. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's fine. The, the, yeah, the way you've you've put it, you've linked what we are reading to what type of politician we should be, and and yeah. So just to remind everyone else here, uh, what is what uh, uh, sister, the, the brother is referring to is a question of whether you are a conservative politician, a liberal politician, or a progressive politician. Mm -hmm. So a conservative politician will invoke. Um, this idea, in terms of what we've read, a, a, um, a conservative politician will invoke the idea that there is some kind of order in the universe, some kind of spiritual order, and at the top is him himself or herself, and then God above him or her, and then everybody else underneath a kind of uh, a system, and and then so that's the conservative uh, politician will invoke that. So you must you must know your place in the scheme of things. Don't rise above your class. Don't rise above your place. And then at the extreme end, the other end, are the progressive politicians who would say that, no, we are all equal. Therefore, there is no hierarchy. It's a, it's a horizontal space. All of us are equal and give philosophical reasons why. And then the liberal politician is between. Because liberals are always between. They never make up their minds. They are here, they, they blow hot, they blow cold. So in South Africa, for instance, the liberals uh, suddenly said they never voted for apartheid. And yet somebody voted for apartheid. Apartheid was in place for many, many years. And yet suddenly these liberals, those who call themselves liberals now in South Africa, for instance, suddenly, um, I'm talking here about 1994, uh, 90, 95, 96, 97, 98, those, those, that period. I don't know about now, but when apartheid came to 1994, and I was in South Africa myself in 1990. 96 and was really celebrating. It was so 
happy that apartheid had come to an end. You know, and then some of the arguments at the time uh, from liberals were sad and they never voted for apartheid. But somebody did, he didn't vote for itself. Um, so, so those are the liberals, you know, they are not sure whether to, to, to enforce uh, uh, an eternal hierarchy in our world, the white person at the top with a white god, and then black people with black skin, and the devil being black at the bottom, um, or whether they should, they should just get rid of the whole hierarchy and say that black or white, we are all equal. Liberals are not clear, they are on both sides. So yeah. on one side are the conservatives, and on the other side are the, the sure. progressives. Are we going so, so, yeah. in the book, Brother Kwame? No, I'm, I was commenting, sorry, I was commenting on, 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 on the point that uh, Thomas Sakara was making, by, because she's linked the, 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 the reading with the types of politician there is. If, I don't know if that makes sense. So I was just trying to uh, uh, cl cl clarify that for uh, everyone. Okay, uh, so still on the book. Um, uh, so Brother Michael, thank you for your comment. Uh, Sankara, thank you for your comment. Uh, let's go to Jibril. Jibril, what is your view on the reading? It's on the screen. Okay. Jibril is not saying much. I don't know whether he's he's in the meeting or not. I'm going to I'm ask him to unmute himself. Oh, now he's disappeared. It could be that he's having problems with. Oh, Jibril is still there, right? I, I want Jibril, to unmute yourself. So okay, I want to so, talk. Yeah, hold on, hold I on, talk. hold on. Hold on. So Jibril is not responding. So I'll go to Jay, who is yeah. also wants, says he wants to talk. Yeah, Jay, we will all my, talk. My, Jay, my fellow, Jay, fellow, uh, uh, Jay, yeah, Jay, yeah. Jay, we will all yeah. talk. Don't worry. I, I, I've not left you out. <laughs> all right, <laughs> you can continue, continue, please. Yeah, talk me. Yes, sir. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> it's not me too. I've been listening to you for ever since. Yeah, you are doing well. We thank you for you are doing great for Africa. Uh, thank the you. problem we well, have in us, Africa. It's us, really. Yeah. Yeah. The problem yeah, we have you. in Africa, we have to continue strengthen some of our African leaders that are pioneers, even in the front line now. Some like Uganda president, he might have an internal. Uh, uh, problem difficulties, but uh, external, we people who are on this platform and other people, let's collaborate and continue strengthening, giving so the Kenya, uh, some other ones that are also doing very well, uh, Dr. Kwame have done and left because I know they have started fighting them. They are, they are going to fight them. So let's continue writing the letter, letter on radio and TV. Let's be using this medium to strengthen them because listen to me. I am a Christian. I know, I don't know, I'm not coming into religion, but I want to tell you, in the Garden of Eden, the Bible says what? The Garden of Eden from the east. Now, the river now is also from the east, and Uganda, the, <laughs> the river now started from Uganda, the source of river now starts from what? Uganda. So no wonder, this movement is starting from Uganda of what LGBT has been what cancelled. That if uh, you come, dare, come with Jay, come with yeah, Jay. my brother, my brother. Uh, uh, the Nile, I think it's it's uh, from 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 Ethiopia. So the, no, no, uh, it's not from Ethiopia. Uh, you can check. Yeah, hold, you can on, hold, back oh, to hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm, I stand to be corrected. But there is okay, a blue so. Nile and then there's a white Nile, and then they converge and meet somewhere down. Yeah, there. exactly, exactly. Uh, one source, one source is in Rwanda, uh, yeah. and then one source is in, one source in Ethiopia. Uh, yeah, okay, I'm yeah. not sure. I'm I'm not sure about Uganda, but uh, there's no Ugandan here to confirm. But that is what <laughs> I know. But anyway, um, yeah, anyway, the other thing is the, the other thing is I hear you. But can you link what you are saying to what we've read on the screen? Yeah, please? yeah. I'm just trying to tell you on the biblical view, a, a point of view also. When you read Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 43, verse 1 up to 
7, it talks about the eastern gates, where the, the, the river is so God coming, the Jehovah God, the glory of God coming from the east. So yeah. no wonder the eastern part is a revival coming to the eastern part. So I want all the people in the eastern part, most especially from the Uganda, Ethiopia, Kenya, they should, uh, Rwanda, they should embrace it. You could imagine what is happening for, for King Gami have started something of development, the, the neatest country in Africa so far. Now, another was also embracing what? From what? Uganda. I want the African leaders, even the grassroots, and just like what you are saying, we should be able to what? Empower them, mobilize them, be back of them. Yeah, sometimes the Western Union or the Western part, they'll bring forces, but we shouldn't give up. I support what you are, your philosophy of teachings. I support it 100%. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Comrade J, it's not my philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, because you brought it, you did, you brought the teachings, as you have, to, you've done yeah, a lot of uh, research. So yeah, but they are not my private philosophy. It's the, it is the philosophy, it's the philosophy and ideology of consciencism, yeah, <laughs> with, with specific reference to the African revolution of decolonization, with specific yeah. reference to the African Revolution. Yes. So it is, it is the philosophy and ideology of progressivism, of Pan-Africanism, that anyway. our father and grandfather, however you put it, Kwame Nkrumah, has yeah. left for us. And it is a distil distillation of the Pan-African Conference from 1902 in the US all the way to Manchester 1945. And when he came yeah. to the continent in 19, 1948, I believe, or 47, okay. 48. Or, or, okay. or, or so. So, so it, so it is, it is the, it is Pan-Africanism basically. It is the true yeah. Pan-Africanism. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I just thought I should make, uh, yeah, that clear. That is not my, 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 my private um, uh, philosophy. Yeah, no, but, no, no, but you are right. I, I believe in it so much. I believe that it is a solution to our problems, and uh, we have been misled to think that there is another philosophy somewhere that will solve our problem. And we know there is liberalism cannot solve our problem, Never. conservatism cannot solve our problem, only pan Africanism, in terms of philosophy and ideology, as we are reading it in this book, that is the solution. Uh, so, yeah. thank you for your uh, uh, contribution. Please don't go away. I will like to contribute later as we read more. Yeah, thank Amen. you. Amen. Shalom, thank shalom, shalom, shalom. Thank you. Uh, uh, All right. No, 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 Yo, yo, Messi, Messi, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so, yeah. com comrade, yeah. a pigeon. Uh, Why oh, you said he would get? He's he, a very he said he would get. Person. Yeah. He said he would get my number from you. He spoke in my language. <laughs> um. So, so you know. So, thank you. So, we've heard from Brother Michael. We've heard from from uh, the sister said they have deferred, but we heard from Thomas Ankara. We've heard from Brother Jay. Yeah. Uh, Jibril hasn't been speaking, so we don't know. So let's go to um, Comrade Ras. Uh, uh, brother, brother Rudumi was here, but he fact, he cannot. The next, he cannot, time, the next he, of the Zoom, please. The next of the Zoom, please. They should send us a day before so that we, we can spread it before time so that we can inform people. Because most of the people who are African diaspora or Pan Africa, they don't know this. So this thing should come ahead of time. I think a day, three days before the time so that we can spread it abroad. Uh -huh. okay. so as far as, so as, far as I can know, get more people, yeah, more people yeah, to get yeah. involved. You know, you know, you, you understand you. what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, thank you. Just so yeah. you know, come repeating that spread it. Oh, he's doing, well. doing very well. He's yeah. doing very well. Do very well. Very well. I admire his is a vigor. He's doing very well. In fact, we yes. have to congratulate him for what he's doing for Mad Africa. Yes. God, God, yeah, God no, must thank, bless thank you very much. Yeah, bye. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. He he. Um, I repeat, I hope you have heard the suggestion that maybe we 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 uh, spread the class news. Uh, we start we start letting people know three days to the Thursday so that so that they are aware. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. So let's go to yes, Kapiji. You want to respond? It's okay. You can respond. No, I'm okay. I've noted that, and I think that will also help us a long way. I'll try to spread okay. early in advance for some three days time. Yes, thank you very much. And he says he will contact you for my number. So when he does, give it to him. Right, let's hear from, from so brother Prince and Prince was here and then he, he dropped off. Ibrahim, 
um, is also here. So we'd like to hear from them with respect to what is on the screen. Brother Jibril, you have now unmuted yourself. Excellent. I'm going to mute Brother Prince and and ask um, Brother, Brother Jay, I'm muting you also now. So Brother Jibril, are you able to speak? If so, please, let's hear from you. Yes, yes, I'm able to speak now. Greetings. Please speak. Greetings. Uh, we are wanted you to thank you speak many, thank many you the, uh, a long time ago before. <laughs> thank you for the for the classes. Uh, it's it's really great. It's really educative. Uh, I want to thank you for that and my brother, Big The the other Can thing I want to mute, please. Could uh, somebody go on mute? Uh, my, yeah, Michael, he can't do anything. He's, he's, he's where he is. He can't do anything about it. So we just have to bear it. Sorry. Yeah, go on, Jibril. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah what, I, on, what I want to, to comment uh, is the, the awareness raising. Because I believe as young Africans, people like me, uh, this thing will help a lot, will enlighten us, will educate us a lot about the way to because we we call ourselves pan africanists we call ourselves revolutionary you know fighters but in in real fact in actual sense uh, we, we don't know what we should do in order to achieve this you know so doing attending these classes will help a lot help. so i think you know the sensitization the recruitment of people and sensitizing them about the importance of, of what we uh, are doing and what we want as Africans is, is very vital here. It's very important. Thank you. Uh, all right. Thank, thank you very much. Um, so, so Jibril, in, answer to, in answer to your question, what should we be doing? Uh, we know what we should be doing is financial liberation, economic liberation. And Krumah said that uh, the first stage is political liberation. Now, almost all African countries except I think it was in Sahara, which is in conflict with Morocco. Uh, apart from that, almost all of Africa is now free. Uh, South Africa was 1994 and we all, we all jubilated, but um, now we are politically free. Some says now we only have the flag and the anth anthem. I think that belittles our achievement. In Ghana, we spent 10 years fighting for independence. Nkrumah arrived in Ghana in 1947, it was on the Gold Coast, 1947. And, and the, fought, the fight went on till 1957, uh, 10 years it took to liberate Ghana. And for someone to just say, well, it's just a flag and the anthem, it does not uh, show respect for our, exactly. our, our, our parents and what they sacrificed to get us where we are. You know, it's like, it's like saying that the women's vote is nothing. It's like believing the women's vote. And yet in this country, in England, where I am, women had to fight the suffragette movement. They had to fight and fight and fight to get women to be able to vote in this country. And yet people will just say, well, what, what, what did women get? It's just a vote. I see if you know it's nothing. So please, um, uh, uh, anyway, all, all I'm trying to say, uh, com com Comrade Jibril, is that political independence came and we are still in political independence. We don't have economic independence and that is what we need. And political ind uh, economic independence <laughs> means that we the people must not take control of the money of our countries. But the money is being spent by a few people with their collaborators abroad. They are controlling the money. We, the people, must not take control of the money of the country and decide how it is used through the budgetary system. At the moment, even what we want or, 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 or need is not even featured in, in the budgets. The budgets, the way they come up with the budget, the Ministry of Finance will decide the budget and, and then, and then at the end of the day, they give so much money to IMF, so much money to this, so much money there. And then before you know this, oh, we need to borrow money. And then they go to the to the world market. They go and borrow money. Then they say, well, okay, we borrowed money in your name. Uh, they borrow money in our name. And then we have interest to pay on that money. And our children, 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 children are saddled with debt payments. And we, uh, we the people, know nothing about how or why that money was borrowed. Because a few people have... have collaborated and so on. And then we have ministers who go and then they sign documents they have never read. They go, when they go, they're giving documents signed, they just sign. They haven't read the document yet, they are signing. Sign us away. Enough is enough. So we, the people, Jibril, you are asking, that's why I'm telling you this. Financial or economic liberation is now what is on the table. 
we have to take control of the national income and decide how it is used. We the people, not a few liberals, not, uh, not a minority of liberals, not a few, a few conservatives. No, we the people have to take control of the national income. You understand? We, take, we liberate exactly. the national income from these people. And then what we do next is that we then unify and consolidate all the income. And then we decide how to use it. How shall we use it? Well, you know, to develop us, to develop the continent, to develop our us so that we have water to drink, so that we have good drinking water, so our children can go to school, so that we have good housing, so that we have good roads, so that people are not dying on the street, so that we have bridges, so that we have, we have, so that we have the things that make life bearable for us at the moment uh, uh the, the, the our lives are not are not are not are not bearable you know we need life and human happiness and the black man and the black woman is not does not have life and human happiness we are not happy mm -hmm. this world in which we live we are not happy in this world you know mm -hmm. we're not happy. we are dis we are disrespected as a as, as a people nobody mm -hmm. respects us and 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 the reason they don't they don't respect us because we don't have we don't control our money we don't control our resources, you know. So that yeah, is what I, we I need. Want to, I want to, I want to come uh, in. No, come, come here, you can't come in. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just commenting on Gibraltar. We have to hear from others. So let's go to. Thank you. Thank you very uh, much for that clarification. Yeah, let, yeah, Gibral. So let's go to. Oh, uh, say, say, say genius. Say genius. Let's hear from you, please. Uh, so Jesus is not ready. So let's go to Prince. So we are commenting on what is on the screen, the reading on the screen. The answer to the first question of philosophy. What is there? All right. Prince is not ready. Let's go to Ibrahim Kamara. Yeah. Hello. Yes, we want to hear what you think, or what is on the screen. Yes. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Yeah. Thanks so much. Anyways, um, I think this is an opportunity for us, um, getting a free, free classes of this nature. You know, um, there is many progress that have been made considering the fact that um, if we really follow doctrines of um, um, our heroes from Africa, especially our great hero Kwame Nkrumah, um, going through some of the assertive novels, you know, you can understand that um, um, we really need to put hands together in moving, I mean, the, our continent, because some of um, some of this, some of <laughs> the doctrines that we've been be learning before this time of um, getting the Western education to be specific, maybe might just be beneficiary to the West, and um, it indirectly has a limit to do with mm. our our development or moving forward yeah. especially in, in in our continent so um pointing out this some of these things is very important and this is why we have to because i've i've added them um, uh, comrade in some groups that that are pan-african groups and we really have to move these things wider so that other people will get an opportunity to come in, to listen, and so that they will gain more from us. So, so far, so good, you know. Um, I, I, I was coming, though I was listening, but I, I've just arrived home, but I don't want to just say I have nothing to say anyway. But thank you so much. Thank, thank you, uh, fellow, fellow African Ibrahim. Now, Prince, um, yeah, you can speak now. Thank you, Prince. Unmute yourself.
Uh, Prince is not ready, so let's go to Sir Genius. If there's no one to talk, could I say something briefly? Uh, uh, Michael, hold on. Uh, Sir Genius is about to speak. Hello, good evening, everyone. Yeah, um, go on, Sir Genius. I'm Comrade Ibrahim, Mustafa from Nigeria. Um, actually, I was not stable online to follow up the program from the start, but uh, I think this is one of the most wonderful program I think I've attended so far. And we as young citizens of Nigeria, and also as Nigeria as part of African country, I think if a program like this should continue, it will actually build the, you, uh, your, the youth, which are the you, uh, young leaders of tomorrow that will take over for uh, the ones on power now. So I think it's a very wonderful program. But um, one of the contribution I want to make is regarding the issue of communication. You no know, communication is key. So I think a program like this, um, invitation should be sent to people across the African country. And of course, the, the, the time in which uh, the program should be hosted should also be considered. So thank you very much, sir. Okay, comrade Sejinia, uh, so just so you know, um, this is done and our comrade Pigeon, who is leading our communication, is the one that uh, has been, has been um, sending um the invites so he's just dropped off now i think he will come back soon and so he's the one that has been sending the invites and he's here with us he's been listening so we, we have made, we've made note of of it and um, i say we i mean myself michael ida and pigeon and uh we'll take all you've said into account and we are happy uh, because we, we now got got our own zoom account we are happy and sister ida will be the first to say so um to have a special uh, presentation for the youth, where uh, we just share philosophy and ideology. So this this class, it's a discussion class where we read and then we discuss. We can also have a different program where we just explain philosophy, and then people who want to have a discussion can then join this class. But this class is our main <laughs> class where we discuss philosophy and ideology. And here in this class, you have myself, Comrade Michael who has written even a dictionary on the key terms, which uh, we will share in due course. Michael has also helped to put together um, uh, the basic philosophy from consensusism, uh, which, is called, which is called dialectical materialism. He's done that as well, which we'll also share. But yeah, so brother, uh, Sir Genius, we are happy to, to, to do what you've said. And also, just so you know, we're also happy um, if you can put together brothers and sisters, like your age, we are happy to do a presentation to them, yeah? For them. All right, so genius. And uh, thank you very much. So, Michael, yeah, say what you want to say, and then we'll hear from somebody yeah, else. I, 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 I don't know if my um, comment is unwanted or a bit harsh. I think, I, I think it's only one person has actually commented on the third paragraphs that we read. Everybody stated very the importance of what we're doing, which is not in question. And we all yeah. see the global importance or the continental importance of what Nukuma said, but nobody has actually yeah, commented no. on the three paragraphs, and that is the key to conscientism. Yes. So I'm not certain if what with the message we're trying to put across in those three paragraphs is getting yes. across. Uh, well, I can answer that question, Michael. Um, it hasn't gone across as we, we would like to. The reason is that all the people who have spoken uh, have not been stable online. So they haven't really been part of what we've been reading. So that's part of the reason. And even though we're asking them to comment, um, some of them um, just want to share with us how they feel about even what we are doing, let alone even comment on what is on the screen. So uh, I hear you, but we just have to go along with what people have to say in terms of yeah. do you we think hearing, we need we, to repeat we, this next week do you think we, we should might, repeat what we, we've done we might we might have to that's fine that's why i was saying to comrade a pigeon that with this with this thing it's not it's, it's it's not like a reading club where we just read and then we move on it's a it's a class so sometimes in the class you have to go over uh, matters you have to go over lessons you have to go over ideas over themes and so on so yes if we need to, we will. We will. So, 
Uh, I don't mind at all that next week we go over the same the same three three paragraphs again, so that people will understand what what we mean when we say that philosophy is an abstract system. Because you see, you see, Michael, it's good you've read. You see, at the end of the day, when we say philosophy is, is philosophy an abstract system or a concrete system, and then or when we say philosophy is, is philosophy an abstract system, so it's, it's an abstract system. And we ask a question. Well, the first question is it what what is the universe? What is the universe made of? If somebody says that it's made up of spirit and ideas, that has implications. It has implications for philosophy. It has implications for politics and how even political parties are run. Uh, and then when somebody says, well, it, it, is, it is matter, uh, which is what Thales was saying, it's, it's, it's water, that again has implications for the country. If the country's leaders think that the universe is made up of, of, of matter, will run the country differently from those who think the universe is made up of um, of of spirits and their ideas. Those who think the universe is made up of spirits and ideas, those are the kind of people who who um, ask people to pray for rain, to pray for food, and so on. You understand? So, so yeah, you are right that in this class we must understand what it is we are reading because that is how we build the philosophical and ideological posture of our people. Our people must be clear, must be clear in our people's mind. But ultimately, the fight over Africa is a fight over our minds and our, and our hearts. And that means an, a philosophical and an ideological struggle. You see, and, 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 and that, that is very important. So we have to arm ourselves with the right philosophy and ideology. And that is what this, this class is doing. So Michael, thank you that you've noted that. But I think, um, let's yeah. just- um, yeah. and, and when we ask the question, people have to comment on what, as well as they can add, add additional, uh, but they have to, we must insist that they comment on the on what we've read. That's the key okay. to demonstrate yeah. the yeah. understanding. They can yeah, also add that. That, yeah. the, what the, the hope is they can comment on what is read okay. in the text. Yes, Michael. Yes, Michael, they'll come when, when they, they were even here when we read it. That's the problem, some of them were even here when we read it. So yeah, uh, to, to, to the extent that they were here when we read it, yes. And but bear in mind that those who were even here when we read it, some of them deferred as they come back to me. So yeah, so we bear that in mind. Thank you very much for reminding the class in terms of what uh, it needs to do. So let's hear from um, um, Brother Prince, I'll come back to you. Let's hear from Sister Ida first. Um, can I can I follow on from what Michael had just said in that I think that three paragraphs are a slightly a lot to read because we only see the last paragraph to comment on. Whereas when we read one paragraph at a time, at least we can reread that paragraph and comment on that paragraph. But you when can read it, before the class starts. Michael, you can if you have the book, if you have the all the rest. And yes, you, you can reread it before the class. The Michael, I was here when the whole thing was read. So even though I was here, I am saying to you that it is still a lot to take in three paragraphs and then comment on three paragraphs because you only see the last paragraph to comment on. And unless you have a very good memory, as to all the things that were said in all three paragraphs, you flounder slightly, or at least I do. Mm. So that's yeah. my comment. That's my, uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, Sida, well, well made. Um, so um, we've read three paragraphs, um, but the, the paragraph on the screen right now, uh, thank you Sida, is the first paragraph. So I've come back to the top. The first paragraph is what we read which starts with an answer to the first question has a number of aspects. So that's where we are now on the screen. Um, so thank you for reminding us that uh, we should take it so, slowly. But I hope you heard that because I know you are very keen that we read, um, sometimes you even say we should read the page. So anyway, so thanks, Tad. Let's go to Brother Prince. Let's hear from Brother, Pr Brother Prince, please. Uh, good evening. Everyone, yeah, I do. I do uh, find Prince, it difficult. Prince, before you continue, just so you know, we can see your room. I don't know if that's what your intention. 
Right, the camera is showing all your room, so just bear that in mind that we are seeing your room. Yeah. If that is your intention, that's fine. But if it's not your yeah. intention, then that's fine. All right. Yeah, no problem with that. Okay. All right. Carry on. Although I joined the group uh, not quite long, some hours ago, and of course the the topic being discussed, uh, I have not got uh, the details uh, that it entails. Though I pick up some things in respect to the African challenges and some of the way forward you mentioned doing. Uh, have you, have you, can you see the screen? Can you see the screen? Can you see the, the reading on the screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that is what we are commenting on. Okay, okay. Are you able to comment on what is on the screen? Okay, sir. I think I think uh, one of the challenge we are having in African continent. Ah, uh, sorry to have not introduced uh, myself proper. I'm I'm joining from uh, Nigeria. Uh, I think some of the the reasons why African continent is underdeveloped is unproductive populations. We are we are having thousands of millions of populations that hardly have access to education. You know, it's when people have access to education that this set of peoples, either he or she will be able to know what is right or what is wrong, westernly, to say. And of course, and some of the basic things that somebody needs, just as right, when you go to school, you will be able to know some of your rights as may be prescribed by your constitutions or the law, wherever you are. So Nigeria, you have to be specific. The northern part of the country, we find out that, you know, thousands to millions of children uh, are out of the school. And the government even release uh, the statistics early this year, that about 12 million children are out of school. This is called for alarming because these are the set of peoples, you know, a decade to come that may likely have access and to be our leaders. But they are not well equipped. They are not well prepared in terms of what and what is needed you know, to pilot the affair of the country and all of that. So there is actually a need. Come, come, come Prince. Uh, come with Prince. Yes, sir. I think what you what you are saying is very very important. Important. And you are talking about the education as an instrument of ideology. Of ideology. Yes, sir. And the ideology that you are referring to, although you haven't said it is either liberalism or conservatism. But conservatism says only educate a small, a few people in the country very well. Liberal said educate a minority. We, we progressively say educate everyone. So what you are calling for is a progressive policy. And that can only happen if progressives take control of the national income. And then they will then educate everybody. In Ghana, we have free education for all. I myself, I went, uh, my, my second, my sixth form education was free. I didn't pay, um, I didn't pay for that. And most of the leaders in Ghana today from the north of Ghana had free education. Having said that, I would like you to come to the Saturday class because that's when we discuss uh, these things, the unification of Africa. And in your case, the fact that it requires an educated population. And as a math teacher, I would say, I would add a mathematically literate population who can do the calculations. So what I would ask is that, uh, Comrade Prince, I hope you are taking note of Brother Prince, because you need to invite him, need to invite him specifically to come and do a presentation on the education matter. Because, and, so, and, and so what we'll do is we will, we will allocate um, a, a day, uh, one Saturday to education, and Comrade Prince, I'd like you to come and share what you are sharing with 
because it's so so important okay friends uh, but um, yeah. for today it's a philosophy class so we are looking at what is on the screen whether you can comment on what is on the screen you know what is our universe made of that is a question and it is not a far-fetched question because the answer to that question affects politics and how the country is run. And this is, this is the thing. This is what in Krumah, and this is why some people miss consensism because they don't know where to start from. You see, when, they, when, when you look at the problems of the country, where do you start from? The answer to that question in consensism is start from the constitution of our universe. Because if you get that correct, then you get everything correct. Why? As Michael mentioned, everything in our universe is a result of categorical conversion. So once you understand the basic type, then you understand what is going on. So if you have a leader who believes that the universe is made up of spirits and their ideas, you know whether that leader will take your country, as opposed to matter. So this question is so vital that we need to understand that if we want to solve our problems as Africans, we must begin from the beginning. And what is the beginning? What is our universe made of? Yeah. What kind of universe do we live in? That is a question what there is. So, uh, Comrade Prince, thank you very much for your, for your, your yeah. comments. We'll pick it up on, on, a, on one Saturday. Okay? okay. So, make, well your, make your final... Sorry? Well understood. Yes. So, so Comrade Pigeon will get in touch with you and we'll schedule um, a Saturday uh, where we will discuss education as an instrument of the ideology of the, for the unification of Africa. You see, and then we'll, okay. we'll, we'll address yes, that. I, I would like to, if, if you can give me just one minute, let me also uh, comment on uh, something very important of this, sir. Yes, you have a minute. Carry on. That's yeah. Fine. Just so I'm, about I'm, I'm, I am I am I am timing you. Your minute starts now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sir. That uh, I I was in kind of so impressed when I listened to different kind of episode of uh, Kenya presidents when they went to France about two weeks or two weeks ago for global finance summit or something there about where he spoke, you know to the power, those that keep on, you know, on that develops for a very quite long period of time. It makes mentions of uh, uh, some international uh, agencies or commissions that continue to borrow us monies and all of that. And of course, ask us to pay much more, you know, high rates as compared to uh, others of which we, we find it difficult to pay sometimes, just as, as we are into global crisis now. Some of these uh, 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 activities now, some of us get to know that, yes, actually, we are not uh, actually independent as a continent. As you earlier make mentions of, economically, we are still depends on those people. They tell us what, uh, we need to eat, what we need to wear and all of that from what I've listened to so far. And I'm glad that this kind of uh, uh, program is being identified. And any moment from now, so I'll, I'll make sure that all your activities will be online and educate myself and others. Okay, thank you. Your, 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 thank your minute you, was over, but I thought I, I should, yeah, I thought I should let you speak. Um, so, um, so thank you very much. The time is almost thirteen minutes to nine when our program ends, and we all can speak because of the time. So I'll ask Comrade Pigeon to, to, um, because his hand is up to speak. Um, okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Uh, I do appreciate everybody who have attended here. Yeah, over and, uh, over. I'll, I'll really uh, ask oh, all of them who have been here to help me or help us get more people come on board. But I think today we have experienced 
many new people have never joined our class and therefore there might have been an issue in terms of constructive contribution to our class. And I think it should be very clear that uh, we as a class have two classes and we decided to make it them intentionally. This class today we share, we read a book like what is in the screen. After reading, each member share what they think in terms of what has been read. And that's what we discussed purely. On Saturdays, we have a class at the same time, 1900 EMT, where we talk open issues about Africa from education, politics, security, and anything else you want to talk about. But on Thursdays, you either share what you think in regards to whatever has been shared in the reading, or if you don't understand, you ask to be excused. So to new members who have joined us, that is what we do on Thursdays. We don't just talk in anything, but we also try to relate whatever we read here in terms of what is currently going on in Africa. So you can be able to relate it. But on Saturdays, we have open forum. So that's what I wanted to make clear to members who join us before I give my input as well. So sorry for that confusion, Chair, but uh, we must understand that also some few members join us who are new to the class. Now, yes, and, and, and that's what, what that's what, but uh, so from my opinion, that's what Brother Michael was was commenting on that he didn't feel that members were contributing to what had been read, and I was saying fairly, some weren't even here when we read them, but we read them very, very, very fairly on. Uh, but it might be a good idea, from my opinion, that you, um, what you've just said, that you explain again. I know you have, but maybe make it more detailed in the in the sharing of the, the communication to do with the class that you sent you sent out that this is what we do in the class okay. on, on, um, on this days. thank you All right, carry on with thank your you very much comment on the, on the yeah um, what we yeah I, I was i was eagerly looking forward to this question of what there is because uh, as we read in the previous paragraph it was what there is and how what there is so there are two aspects uh, actually uh yeah. To the aspect we have been discussing, abstract and concrete, I'm really trying to see whether whatever explanation we have here on the universe made of water or matter will fit to be concrete or abstract. But yeah, what so I can want I to just come in before, before you continue? Before you continue. Yes. Yes. The reason I let you read, I know Sisaida said that we read too many paragraphs, but the reason I let you read the next two paragraphs was because those two paragraphs, the extra two paragraphs you read in addition to the paragraph on the screen, answer the question. They, they answer the question. So Thales, the, the one you call Thales, Thales answer is the answer that says the universe is made up of matter. And then the, the second person, Barclay, his, quest, his answer was spirits and their ideas. So those two, those two characters, Thales and, and, uh, and Barclay, George Barclay, the Englishman, and Thales, who 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 was who, who was a Greek, uh, those two, those two, um, provide us with with the the the, the two big, uh, if you like, answers to the question. The only two big answers there are to the question: What is the universe made of? So that's why I let you read those, so that that paragraph on the screen now. It's not looking too abstract, but then to show that these are the two answers that have been given. One, the material answer, which is Thales, who says water, and then the spiritual answer, which is Barclay. Because Barclay was a priest. He was a priest of the Church of England. Anyway, so that was his answer, the spirits and their ideas. Thank you. So please carry on here. Thank you. Thank you. Now, their explanation here and their answer here, do they fit to be abstract answers or concrete answers? So, so the answer from Thales that is water is, is an abstract answer. It's abstract in the sense that if you look at it, what Thales is saying, although you can say water is a concrete thing, what, what uh, Thales is saying is that with water, you can display the entire universe. But since the universe is made up of bishops and apples and so on, it means that uh, Thales has abstracted from all those to tell us what the basic ingredient is in the construction of our universe. So in that sense, it is, it is abstract. Yeah? 
Now, the answer that, that Barclay gave is also abstract because Abraclus is also saying that spirits and their ideas, spirits and the ideas of spirits are the, are the constitutive element of the entire universe. Therefore, that is also abstract. When you get into the universe itself and you see an apple on a tree, that is concrete. That is concrete reality. Yeah. When you see a, a priest, yeah, uh, a priest or an imam or, 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 or a doctor or what do you call a witch doctor or a traditional priest, then that is concrete reality as well. So the answer to your question is, the answers that they gave in terms of the philosophy being abstract, the answer is that the two answers are abstract answers. They are answers that say that ultimately this is the element that constitutes our universe. One element only. Okay. For Thales, water. For Barclay, spirits and the ideas of spirits. So those are okay. the abstract Thank you. elements. From those, you okay. can okay. then explain all the reality, including concrete reality. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Now, permit me to conclude my 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 my, my submission by saying that, please. based on these two elements, based on these two elements, as you have said, they define uh, them, Please do the, because your the, submission the will be the last. Anyway. Okay. Based on these two elements, they define the methodology of leadership, and I think when either the white came or those with the religion came to Africa. Not that Africa never had religion, but they brought the spiritual aspect of the world and the material aspect. And they indoctrinated Africa to believe on the spiritual aspect of world being made of spirit. At the advance that when they came, they themselves they were exploiting the water side of the world, that the world is made of material. And if you check even in their own countries, in the Western and whatever, they advance more of materialistic aspect than the spiritual aspect of the world. But the African and the leadership, all Africa, decided to believe on the spiritual aspect and not or actually forgetting the materialistic aspect. And that's why they keep on robbing our resources and everything else. And we felt it was fair yeah, hold enough. On. Oh, we could uh, hold, pray, hold, hold we could on, Comrade Pigeon. Comrade Pigeon, oh, hold on. You use the word materialistic. Be careful there. You mean materialist. That's what you were you was. Yes, materialist. materialist. No, materialistic. Yes, materialist. Uh, materialist, yes. yeah. Materialist. Oh. Yeah, in, in the aspect, as we say, the other side of the, those who came to colonize us either took the world at a perception of world is made up of water. But in order to get water out of us, they brought to us that the world is made up of spirits and we, let, we are left on the spirit aspect, never too much on the other side of the water aspect. And this, I think, if we will be defined clearly moving forward, it will show the differences in terms of how do we carry out and conduct our affairs and our philosophy of leadership and even of guidance and even of the society in respect to how do we conduct Africa vis-a-vis -vis how do they conduct their, 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 their continent and how do these years? Because I believe that there's like actually a clear difference here. There's a side of the people who takes the earth or the universe made up of spirits and are left in that spirit aspect where there's a side of people who view the universe made up of water. And I think those who view the universe made up of water are more advanced to the expense that, at, at the expense of those still think the world is made up of spirit, who could pray for everything else. You are sick, you don't seek any medication, you pray. There's drought in your country, you pray. And everything else is just either prayers or anything else, but you don't go actually to safeguard the, 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 the material aspect of the life. So that's what I can say. Oh, what, what, what I would say, say, thank you for that, by the way. I think what you've done, Comrade Pigeon, is you've done, drawn out the political implication of this question is the, the, the fact that philosophy is an abstract system. You've drawn out the implication for, for, for politics. And that's the point I made earlier, that the reason people miss consensism is that they don't understand where it starts from. So when they come, they are confused. And then they say the book is hard. But if you understand that consensus starts from the beginning, and where is the beginning? The beginning is the question, what is our universe made of? This cosmos we live in, you know, even ourselves, what are we made of? You understand? And then once, once we understand that, that's where it's coming from, 
then we can understand, ah, so this is how, this is where politics comes in. This is where education comes in. This is where housing comes in. This is where food comes in. This is where this and that and that. Then everything is clearer for us, you see. But unless we get philosophical understanding, you know, I'm not even saying ideological. I'm saying philosophical understanding of what it is we are dealing with, then we are lost. So, so thank you very much for, for, for drawing that out. But I would add that in answering the question, how did the whites, how did the imperialists mislead us? Uh, answer, the, answer the question historically, rather than, um, rather than, yeah, rather than in an abstract way, you know, because um, if you don't eat oranges, how can someone mislead you with something that looks like an orange? You see, if, if you don't eat eat banana, how will, how can someone come to you and deceive you with something that looks like banana? The only way somebody can come and deceive you with banana and something that looks like a banana is because you yourself eat banana already. But if you don't eat banana, nothing they, they, they show to you about banana will attract you. You understand? If, if you don't drink alcohol and you don't touch, if you're a teetotaller, you don't drink alcohol at all, you know, then nobody can poison your drink because you don't drink alcohol anyway. So nobody can put alcohol, uh, poison in a drink and give it to you, you drink and then you are poisoned because you don't drink alcohol. So the point I'm making is that it's not, it's not so much that the white man came and deceived us. Let's also look at what we ourselves as Africans believed in and how that was used at us. Because the problem also is what we believe in as Africans, you see. So, so in looking at the answer, how were we misled, let's look at what we ourselves eat or eat or ate, you know, were we banana eaters such that we were deceived with some that looked like banana, you know, or were we not? So that's, that's the point I want to make. The time is nine o'clock. So I'm afraid the meeting comes to a close. Sorry for those who couldn't speak. And I couldn't come back to you like Marlin. Um, sorry about that, but um, time is up and the time is uh, nine o'clock and this meeting comes to a close. I will ask um, Sister Ida to give us um, a fi final comments and then we bring the meeting to a final close. Um, okay, thank you. I was about to say goodbye to all of you, but um, my final comment was that it is, it was nice to see quite so many people come even if they dropped out it was interesting to hear what people had to say um and i feel michael has a point in that maybe um we could go back over some of it though at the end i think you summarized it as to um what we had read though um at the time when you asked me to comment on it i was thinking oh there was a lot where did it start etc so um Thank you all for attending. Oh, um, hold on, Sister Ida. I know you're yes. making a final comment, but can I ask? Um, so how, how did it become clearer to you? Maybe you can share that with us before you- Oh, it became clearer. When, when you started um, giving us a summary, then I could remember what had been read. But um, when it came to me after having read, after you'd read the three paragraphs, um, I was a, a bit lost. You know, I could only sort of see the last bit, but I couldn't see the- the first bit to um, mm. um so so so, my, so what would you say was, is a summary for you confused yeah so what would you say is a summary for you now you're taking away from this class um i'm taking away that it was about um uh materialism well not materialism it was about two two different thinkers one who thought in in um about water and the other who thought about spirits would be what mm. I'm taking away, but to um, yeah, but to um, dilute it further, I think um, I would I would like a bit more. But that is that mm. is what I have taken away from the summary. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Okay. Thank right. you. Yeah. Carry on and make your final submission so we can close the meeting. Here. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. so yeah. that is have my final, your final submission. Yeah. Um, oh, I, my okay. my, right. my other final submission would be that. Um, I hope that everybody will try and attend Saturday because I can see that those who wanted to have a free discussion about things to do with uh, the continent really uh, are thinking it was Saturday's discussion time. 
But right. um, yes. as you yes. said to everybody, this is, is a class and we're following the book on a Thursday, but it's free discussions on Saturday. So thank you all. Good night. All right. So I'm, yeah, I'm going to stop sharing and also um, stop the recording. And uh, that's it, uh, everyone.